Crazy day. 13 games on in the NBA to finish off week 23. Let's recap everything that happened. Let's see if there's any takeaways. There are. There's plenty of them. Let's talk about all the big performances, the bad performances, the injuries, and all that stuff. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and these are my stories. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com, and you can find me on Twitter as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at LockedOnFantasyBasketball. Today's episode is brought to you by PrizePix, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to PrizePix.com slash LockedOnNBA. Use the code, all lowercase, LockedOnNBA, for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first. Listen every day. We are free and we're available on all platforms. So thumb it up, double bang, leave your comments down below. One week left, five NBA game days left in the 2023-24 regular season. Then we move into the playoffs, of course. So we're here to break down what happened on Sunday with the big old 13 games on. 13. A lot of games. So let's talk about, we're not going to cover any sort of news here because it's all sort of encapsulated within the 13 games that actually occurred. So we're going to get into those in a sec. We will just have a quick look at um, waiver wire trends across the NBA, who was added, who was dropped. Let's see if we could take or what information we could take out of that. The most added player uh, was Jabari Walker up 13%. I think that makes sense. He's got a lot of minutes. Doubtful legend Jeremy Grant's not returning. Grant Williams up 10%. Seems like a viable move, especially with Nick Richards coming off the bench now. Bubble Champagne up 10%. Keldon Johnson goes down again today. Champagne's minutes are there. Love that. Ananobi up 6 Didn't realize he was available in that many spots. Uh, Grayson Allen up 5%. Didn't realize he was available in that many spots. They're obvious must rosters. And then Lou Dort. Yeah. You're getting get dorted so many times, but he was added in five uh, percent of leagues. Most drop players, a lot of these ones, just be aware they're for people whose league ends today. So these are the guys. A lot of these players that played on Sunday, so the guy didn't or played on Saturday, so they don't need them on Sunday. So people drop Drake Laravia, totally reasonable to do it. People drop Chemezi Metu. I wouldn't have done that honestly. I, that's not true. Obviously, if my league ended on Sunday, I would drop Chemezi Metu because he didn't play. I dropped Nikola Jokic because he didn't play. But in terms of if we're heading into week 24, then yeah, I'd hold on to Metu. And same as KCP being dropped. Well, he's not a must roster guy. DeAndre Hunter getting dropped. He's not a must roster guy. Jalen Johnson getting dropped. He is a must roster guy. And GG Jackson getting dropped. That's fine as well. Like these guys, like Hunter, KCP, Jackson, they've got a real sort of baseline level of value. But there's going to be so many random blokes pop up over the next five game days that holding on to fringe players like KCP, LaRavia, Hunter, Jackson. Probably not going to end up, I don't think, as that um, as that winning move for you. Let's talk about the games. First one, Cavs, Clippers. We did have a lineup change here because, as expected, Donovan Mitchell rested on the second game of a back-to-back. So that meant that Dracaris Levert moved into the starting lineup for the Cavs. And we thought the Cavs, who've had a really rough run of things lately, thought they might get the victory here. And it certainly looked that way until Paul George went absolutely bananas in the second half of this game. Big, big uh, performance from Paul to get the win, 120-118. Doing everything down the stretch, blocking shots, hitting shots, setting up shots, just a million things that he was doing. Let's talk Cavs. Winner Soldier played 39 minutes on the back-to-back. Uh, Max Drews, 20-4, and four, with nine assists and four threes. Love to see that. Garland, who we thought was like in real trouble. Like, what was he doing? He was really struggling. I did mention I thought he's a massive, massive dynasty by low. His last two games have showed you why I think that's the case. 28, 5 and 8, 5 steals, 4 threes, 40 minutes. Love to see it. Levert played 37, had 18, 5 and 2, and Mobley had 20 and 6. But, like, what do we look at here? The fact that Mitchell will return, Struce will play a little bit less, Levert will play a little bit less, Okoro played here 25 minutes. We sort of know what's going on with this team. For the Clippers, Paul George, 39, 11, and 7, steal, block, 16 of 16 from the line, three triples, amazing. Amazing game, ridiculous. 26 minutes only for Jim Harden. Now, a couple of things that Ty Lue said is that he did have a foot issue, 
So he didn't play like the final quarter, quarter and a half of this game. Basically, he subbed out in the third quarter, didn't return. He had 22-5-5, five five, which is great. But they were down big when he subbed out as well. And then they went on a run and his foot was sore, so they just went with other options. I would expect that Harden sits a game here at some point this week. Terrence Mann was better. 14-4-3. and three. I still don't care enough. But I do care that Russell Westbrook gets 25 a night when Kawhi is out. Now, he only had eight points, Russ, on 33%, which is bad. But seven rebounds, six assists, steal, and a block is useful. So he is useful at this point. Zubats had 14 and 11, while PJ Tucker continues to start and do absolutely nothing. And it also means that Norman Powell is not really stepping up. 14 points, four threes is totally okay. But it's not this gigantic boost that would make Powell a must-roster guy. He's a, a fringe, streamy sort of guy that has a very specific value, but is not like just an absolute must-roster for everybody, I don't think. Let us go to the second game. Or should we do that now? Yep, we should do that now. Let's go to the second game of the day. Rockets. Mavs. There was a lineup change here because Luka Doncic returned for Dallas, pushing Dante Exum back down to the bench. That's not really any sort of level of surprise whatsoever. Um, this one goes to overtime. The Mavericks win it 147-136 is your final score here for the Rockets. Big minutes from Brooksy. 42 minutes for Dylan. He had 29, 5 threes, 3 steals. Great. You cannot rely upon it all. This game brings him to 251st over the last uh, two weeks. So, yeah, you, we don't care. Jalen Green, even though the shot has fallen off for him recently, which we thought of, sort of thought it would, he's doing a lot of other stuff. 21, 6, and 8 with two steals. A block. Very interesting. What he's able to do next season will be something that I, I just don't know at this stage. But it is, uh, it's very intriguing what he's done. And then Thompson was ejected in after eight minutes. He had five points. Amen is barely top 200 over his last five games. I don't know with the return of Cam Whitwall whether Amen needs to be considered a must-roster guy. You can, but I'm not sure you do. Well, Jabari Smith, r- rotten game here. Look, 12 and 9 is okay. Two threes, 40 minutes, whatever. Two blocks, good. But man, missing those two free throws basically cost them the game, I think. Well, obviously, you can say a million other things cost them. But yeah, he needed to hit one of those down the stretch. Cam Whitmore only got 19 minutes, but he did have 11 and 4. He did have two blocks. He's an interesting stream, sort of in that Norm Powell mode when we're looking for points and threes. Interestingly, though, with the men out, they went to Jeff Green and not the big fella, Jack Landau. Landau played 16 minutes. He had 13 points, while Green had 7 points on 25%. I say interesting in that it's a terrible move, but it is what Udoka has done a few times this year. For the Mavs, Doncic, 45 minutes, 37, 9 and 12, two blocks. Ridiculous. Kyrie, 48, 7, and 2, 3, 3 is ridiculous. Elite efficiency from Kyrie. 60 from the field, 88 from the line on 17 attempts. Unbelievable. I would expect that they got, these guys do sit a game at some point here um, down the stretch. But who knows? Well, Luke already did, but I think Kyrie is probably going to sit one here as well. Paul Washington Jr., 43 minutes. 14 and 13 on 42%. That is the PJ story, but the rebounds are up. The minutes are huge. The blocks were there. The threes are there. Turning these big minutes into production is what PJ is doing, and that's great. Well, Dan Gafford, of all the hullabaloo about Gafford, about how good he is, about what a disgustingly bad move it is to drop him, he has been not very good. 131st over his last five games. He had six points in 16 minutes with one rebound and one block. He did shoot 100%, but... Like, we are seeing some limitations with Gafford's game. I was always massive into Gafford this season. High on, higher on him than anybody, I think, in terms of the draft season because it was all about opportunity for him there. But as I mentioned a million times, I don't think Gafford is a very good player. I don't think, what, that's not true. I don't think he's an awesome player. I don't think he's a guy you build around as a starting center. I don't think he's got this long-term appeal as this guy is going to give these numbers. And then he went to Dallas. We had all the backs and forwards. And now we're sort of starting to see like, yeah, like, would you pencil in Dan Gafford to be starting ahead of Lively next season? I wouldn't. But we'll see where that goes. Hardaway had five points in 18 minutes. Cool. Exum played 35 off the bench with the limitations for Gafford. They went smaller a lot. 14 and nine for Dante with two triples. That's two good games in a row, but I wouldn't want to, um, I wouldn't want to read a huge amount into those games from Dante. I wouldn't want to be adding him based on that. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports as well. So you get on the action while you're watching your favorite sports and players. You pick more than or less than on two or more player stats and you watch the winnings roll in. March is over. But as the biggest moments in college basketball tip off the month of April, 
Championship game is tomorrow. So be a part of the action for both men's and women's college basketball. You can also get a chance to win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level in basketball's postseason. We are a week away from the NBA's playoffs. The play-in actually starts April the 16th. So get ready for that over on Price Picks as well. They've also got the 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks, turning 10 bucks into 1,000 basketball, hockey, college basketball entries. Get them sorted out on Price Picks right now today. Download the app and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app, the code is LOCKEDONNBA, and get a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks, pick more, pick less. It is that easy. Okay, let's roll on. Third game of the day. Um, it was Miami. They were taking on the Indiana Pacers. Well, yeah, they still were. They still did take on the Indiana Pacers. Not that they were and it stopped. The Pacers win it in the end. 117-115 is your final score. Indiana getting the win. Let's talk about this Heat team. Uh, Terry Rozier dealing with a neck problem. He said after the game, yeah, probably shouldn't have played. He ended up with just 22 minutes and four points, four assists on 29%. So I'm just going to suggest he may maybe sit some games here moving forward. Duncan Robinson basically sat this one out anyway. He had 12 points and went score. Sorry, I wish he had 12 points. He played 12 minutes and was scoreless. Missed all four of his shots with uh, Tyler Hero back. Hero had 21 and five in 31 minutes off the bench. I would expect that if Rogier does sit, that Hero would just move into that spot. Butler played 39 minutes. He had 27, 7, and 8. Really strong game from him. While Adebayo had 20 and 12. And Caleb Barton actually chipped in with 20 points in 36 minutes. But of course, as we're well aware, if you've been following Caleb Martin, you can't trust the minutes or the production from him on a nightly basis. Nor can you do it with Jaime Huckers, who played 13 minutes, had three points, um, and continues to really struggle and not be a 12-team or 14-team league guy. And the Haywood Highsmith bubble appears to have burst. Scoreless in 19 minutes. One block. We know we've seen this. He has these three, four good games. You go, hey, what are we doing now? And then he struggles, and then he pushes his way back out of the rotation. And then he pops back in, and he looks good. And it's just a consistent theme with him. Jovic got to 24 minutes. He had 18 points. That's really good, but not a lot else happening there. Still more looking 14-teamers for Jovic versus 12s. For the Pacers, we got 27 minutes out of Timothy John McConnell. And if you thought the 20 minutes was enough, well, here we go. 22 points, 5 assists, 79% shooting. He just got to be on rosters apart from the fact, well, not apart from the fact that in spite of the fact, maybe. They've only got three games this week and no good ones. But McConnell's doing enough that you probably just want to use him anyway. Anyway, Miles Turner played 37 minutes. That's a lot out of Turner. 22 and 13 with two blocks. Well, Siakam, it's been rough from Pascal. 18 and 8 is totally okay. Like, it's not bad. It's not good, but it's also not good. No defensive stats. 130, 125th over the last two weeks. It has not been a pleasant run of things for Siakam. Halliburton was also pretty mid, 12 points on 30%. He did have eight assists and two blocks, but obviously his run has not been great. Well, uh, we've got 40 minutes out of Aaron Neesmith. 16 points, five rebounds, two blocks. 40 minutes ago, that's great. Love it. Love the production. Awesome. But again, they have a terrible schedule. They don't play a quality game this week. So I wouldn't be rushing to add Neesmith and nor Nempard, who had three steals, in his 25 minutes. Let's move it on. We've got the next game to come up. It is the Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the Charlotte Hornets in Charlotte. Closer than you may have expected it to be. A couple of changes to the lineup for the Thunder. Cason Wallace stepped in for Isaiah Joe. And we had Aaron Wiggins jumping back into the starting lineup with Gordon Howard. Gordon Howard? Gordon Hayward out injured. I'm sure Hornets fans would be absolutely surprised to see that. The Thunder do win at 121-118 on the back of some unbelievable performances, and one of them was from Aaron Wiggins. 36 minutes, 26-2-5 with six steals on 55%. He's had a couple of starts here, and a lot of them have been inefficient, but this is a ridiculous game. But of course, we can throw nearly all of this in the bin because Shea and Jalen Williams were out. If they play next game, there's no chance we're looking at Wiggins to do this. None. But it was great to see. Cason Wallace... Got did his thing, two steals, two threes. That's what you want him for. That's what you would have streamed him in for. While Giddy had a 37-minute, 20 and 13 with 13 assists, triple-double. And Chet Holmgren, who'd been bad for a long period of time here, had 20 and 10, three threes, two steals and three blocks. Great to see that. Isaiah Joe moved back to the bench, still had his two threes. While Lou Dort, Lou Dorted, 12 points, 40%, one of two from the line. Hit three threes. The minutes are always there, but the production 
It waxes and wanes. Hall pass legend Lindy Waters had 10 points with two dribbles. For the Hornets, Nick Richards did return from his plantar fascia issue. Not sure why, but he did. Played 18 off the bench and had 10 and 4, but that meant that Grant Williams kept starting. He played 38 minutes, but the big fella. 19, 3 and 5, two steals, a block 70%. If he's playing 38 a night, Grant Williams, you've got to roster him. Trey Mann was also great. 18, 5 and 6, four steals, two blocks. Revenge game for him. 100% shooting from the field on seven attempts, while Vasa Misic had 17 with four threes and 10 assists. You, I don't think you should be leaving Williams, Mann, or Misic on the waiver wire. There was a lot of glazing of Brandon Miller last time out about how good he's going to be, when the All-Star game is going to make, how awesome he is, because he shot 80% in the game, right? This is where, again, it's not to denigrate him. He is going to be, I'm pretty sure, my third in Rookie of the Year when we do the votes or when I do my votes later on. Um, he's had some good moments. But when everyone gets it out and all soggy wheat picks is all over Brandon Miller... Right, we talk about these good games and it's all everywhere, and then no one will peep a single word about him having 13 points on 13 shots on 31 percent in 36 minutes. Right? No one. And again, it always feels like I'm being a hater, but there's a certain player, and I don't know why people will latch on to the Anthony Edwards effect. I think that happens to him. Edwards does the stuff where he's doing unbelievable things, and we love it. And he has a stretch of four games where he shoots 30%, goes 70% from the line, and doesn't do anything, and it's it's crickets. And it's the same with Miller. Last game was awesome. This game, terrible. He did have three blocks, but it's not good. But you'll get the idea that Miller's sick, he's awesome, he should be challenging Wemby for rookie of the year, like some idiots will say. Obviously not. But you just got to be cautious of taking in all of the information. Bridges had 15 and 9. He was inefficient while uh, Bertans hit four triples. He had two steals. Davos Bertans getting steals at the moment is actually a real thing, and I don't know what's going on there. He had four triples while uh, Poku had 14 and 9 in 21 minutes. That at least turns Poku into a, uh, a streamer of some description. We did have in the next game, which was the Pelicans and the Suns, some pretty interesting things develop in this one. Um, we did have a lineup change because... What is this? I just wrote something on this graphic and I'm actually embarrassed to show it out. So I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to go and edit it. All right, now that I've been able to fix that embarrassment that you'll never get to see, there was that lineup change. Zion Williamson moved back into the starting lineup after a one-game absence. That meant the dustbuster, Dyson Daniels, he went back to the bench. Again, nobody really surprised with any of that stuff. And the Pelicans won, largely because Zion just said, cool, let's go. Right, we are... I'm just doing this. And he did. 113 to 105. The Pelicans win Zion. Played 40 minutes. He had 29, 10 and 7. One steal, five blocks. Hit his field goals. Hit his free throws. He dominated. Really, really big stuff from Zion. They also played Jonas Valanciunas the first four minutes of the game. He had two points and they went, absolutely no more. You are not doing this again. And therefore, you can do the same to Jonas. Get that! Larry Nance played 32 minutes, 9, 8, and 7, 3 steals and a block. And there are people that whenever you say, hey, let's watch Larry Nance. Well, the Pelican schedule is good. Larry Nance get him in. So go, Larry Nance, the guy's trash. Every time he's bad. Never going to do it. No, what are you talking about, George? Never. He's absolutely useless. This is why we're always interested in Larry Nance. Because he just does a little bit, little bit here and there. Never going to be a big scorer. Yeah, he wasn't awesome through that period. But it's always this. This is what he can do. 9, 8, 7, 3 steals and a block is an elite fantasy line. Just doesn't do it enough, the big fella. McCullum played a lot. 42 minutes, 31, 4, and 5 with 7 triples. While Jose Alvarado returned. He had 15 points. He hit 5 threes. That's great. We're not going to rely upon Jose to do that. Daniels had 2 and 6. He had a triple 1. Like, you got the steal that you needed, but we're in, like, just desperation stream zone there. While Ken Murphy was bad. 13 points, 39 minutes, 31%. Not good from Trey. And Herb was bad as well. 4 points for him. He had 3 assists. Herb Jones with 1 steal. Missed both of his shots. Herb Jones does this. He has these unbelievable runs, and then he has runs where he scores four points with no defensive stats. And you go, what am I actually doing with this bloke? And that does make it hard because it is very up and down. For the Suns, most of their big guys were great. And by big guys, I just mean they're starters. Let's just say that. Brad Beal. It's been a bad season for Beal for, you know, to a degree. But 39 minutes, 33 points, seven dribbles, five assists, two blocks, 68%. Per game, He's basically bang on where you would have drafted him, around in the like late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, he missed a bunch of time early on. I think he's played 20 consecutive games here. He's 62nd over the last two weeks. For all of the failures of Beal, he's been about right, I think. Despite you know, missing that time at the beginning of the year that we had no idea about because he had a back injury that no one told us of. Booker played 39 minutes. He had 25, 3, and 7. 
Grayson Allen wasn't great, but he was fine. 11 and 5, two steals and two blocks. And Durant, just both Durant and Grayson Allen shot 36% from the field, which is pretty weird. Durant had 23, 4 and 6. And Nurkic, man, this guy is just one of the worst finishing centers in the NBA. Six points on 29%. But 10 rebounds, six assists, three steals, and a block. Very, very good and very, very useful. And the rest of the team, nothing. Nothing. We got nine rebounds out of Drew Eubanks. Like, that's sick and all, but it's also not. And yeah, we just didn't get anything that was interesting at all come out of that. Cool. That will now bring us... I was going to say we'll get into the next game, but we won't get into the next game just yet. Because today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you are hiring for your small business, you know there can be a pain. You want to get the quality professionals in that are right for the role. That's why you got to go and check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Easy stuff because you don't want to be wasting time with unqualified people chucking their names in, trying to get the jobs that don't make any sense for what the role actually is. I've dealt with that personally myself. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It's a vast network of over a billion professionals that you can get your job out in front of. And small businesses say that's great because they say also they get a qualified candidate applying for that job within 24 hours, 86% of the time. So get your job out there. And LinkedIn can also help you write out the job descriptions, write out the tasks, all that sort of stuff that just make that all easier, all faster, and in the end, more effective. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, so that does bring us now into the next game. It is the sixth game of the day. Your Chicago Bulls and my Orlando Magic. Uh We did have a lineup change. Alex Caruso wasn't able to go, so Javante Green, scrap heap legend, moved into the starting lineup. If you remember this, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, but about two years ago, Javante Green took the starting job for Chicago over Patrick Williams. He They benched Patrick Williams and said, all right, Javante is our starting power forward now. And then he hurt his knee and he didn't play for like a year. And now he's back. And they signed him to a rest of season deal and he started here with Caruso out. And the Bulls are still mid because a lot of their team, other players are terrible. But Javante is interesting. 113, Orlando, 98, Chicago. Javante, second good game in a row. 22 minutes, 15 and 8, three blocks, one steal. 86% shooting got him here. I would suggest that maybe you want to explore a little bit more of Javante Green rather than 25 minutes of Andre Drummond, but I don't know. I don't mind a stream here of Javante, but Caruso coming back will impact that. I know I get a lot of crap for people thinking that I hate Vooch. I don't. He just isn't good anymore. And yes, there are certain players like Vooch that when they play big minutes, usually they'll produce pretty good fantasy numbers. Now, that wasn't the case here. He had eight points with no defensive stats on 11% shooting with five rebounds. Vooch is just bad from an actual real-life NBA perspective at this point. But when you get given minutes and opportunities, then when Levine goes out and your usage ramps up, you look better. I wouldn't say he's looked good. He's not a top 50 player this season, Vooch. And I don't really know where things go, but he sucked. They're giving extra minutes at the moment to Drummond. He played 25 minutes to Big Avocado. He had 14 and 10 with two steals. I don't really want to fully lean into that. But, you know, there are some rebounds. Well, DeMar DeRozan, it's been a weird year for him as well. I know people will tell me how awesome he's been. I believe he's like, and I think I, I tweeted this out, that he's the 13th or 14th ranked player using straight nine cat totals numbers, which is just one of the biggest misleading things you will ever see in fantasy. Not as bad of a misleading thing of Vooch being top eight last season or DeLon Wright being 50 spots better than Giannis, but it is pretty misleading. He's had some weird efficiency issues at times this season, DeRozan. He played 40 minutes. He had 30 points. He had shot 59%. That's great. And then went four of seven from the line. I don't know where DeRozan is going to play next season. I don't know if it's going to be on this team, what his usage is going to be like. We've already seen big field goal percentage drop from him. I think that he has got a absolutely prime candidate to be overdrafted. Kobe White returned from his ankle problem. It's been a horrendous stretch from him shooting. He just cannot do it. I actually benched him today in my Roto League. So I just said, I don't know if he's going to play. And I just, if he plays, like, is he actually going to be good? 11, 2 and 6, 36%. And this Bulls team, again, they are annoying. They are, I hate talking about them. But next season, what happens with DeRozan? What happens with Vooch? Do they stick around? Do they trade Levine? Does Lonzo Ball bloody come back? I don't know. So many things can change around here. That's probably about it in this game. For the Magic, bad news is his Franz Wagner hurt his ankle. 
Um, 20 minutes for him, 16, 4, and 3. It's the same ankle that cost him about 10 games earlier in the year. I know they're in the battle to get the 2, the 3 seed, that sort of zone, but I don't think that France is going to be able to play all of the games this coming week. After a couple of poor ones, Jalen Suggs was back on track. Helps when you play Chicago. 19, 3, and 5 with two steals and a block. And that is two good games also for Markel Fultz in a row. 17 and 6 in 23 minutes for Fultzy. Big shooting numbers. Playing really well. Now, I don't know that this increased production from Fultz is due to the fact that John Isaac has like catfished us here again. At least he got into the game. He played five minutes and then left with back spasms after being healthy last game and never playing with back spasms. You cannot hold on to John Isaac at all. You can't. Get that garbage out of here. Scoreless with two rebounds for him. But Fultz has stepped up. I don't know I feel super confident about Fultz. There's a back-to-back coming up. He's probably going to sit as well. But it looks interesting. We've got more minutes from Joe Ingles as well. He had 9, 3, and 5 with three triples. I don't think there's anything to do there. While Wendell had 11 and 8 and played 34 minutes. And Bunkero did his usual thing. 24, 6, and 5. No defense. With okay percentages in this one. Actually good from the free throw line as well. But they had this one comfortably in hand, Orlando. And they handed the Chicago Bulls a necessary and needed loss. By needed, I just mean they need to lose because they're bad. And they need to realize that they're bad, although they never will realize that they're bad. And that is the conundrum that we live in every day of the year. The Wizards and the Raptors, what a game this is. Toronto wins at 130-122. Jordan Poole, 40-minute legend. 29-4-12, and 12, two steals, four threes. 20th ranked player over his last five games. The prophecy has been fulfilled. Can he end up inside the top 100 per game? He's at 109th. We're getting there. Denny Abdia, 41 minutes. 32, 10, and 5, two steals, three blocks, two triples. Big game from him. It's almost impossible for me to look at anything, including Jordan Poole, anything that's happening on this team to be anywhere close to real. Like Kyle Kuzma was out, not sure if he returns. He might, but they're just making up injuries every day for him. Jones is out. Holmes is still out, not sure if he returns. I don't know. But one thing I have been talking about is we've got to watch the sandwich Patrick Baldwin Jr. And they sort of phased him out a little bit. But in this one, with no Holmes, no Gill, no Kuzma, Baldwin played 33 minutes. He had 16, 11, three threes, two steals, two blocks. And I'm not one to say told you, and I won't do it here. But this is why. Because he does have a very interesting fantasy game. Double doubles with threes in defense is a bloody useful fantasy game. The problem is, is that he'd either get into foul trouble or he'd go 0 of 7 from the field. Just watch to see who is in or out here because maybe there is an opportunity here for Baldwin. They started John Davis. He was scoreless in six minutes and then got hurt, didn't return. He's garbage and he should be waived in the regular, in the offseason here. Well, Vukcevic played 33, 23 minutes, 11, 9, and 4, three blocks. I think that they would just should be giving him these minutes and they should hold on to him in terms of, well, you should hold on to him to see exactly what happens here, but that's useful enough. A lot of minutes for Kismet for 21 and 3. He had five threes. He's bad, but he is benefiting from all of the opportunities. While someone said you can't call both Justin and Julian champagne bubbles. I didn't. I called Julian bubbles and then Justin bubbles too. But he said, why don't you call him the fizz? So let's call him the fizz. Justin Champagne, two points in 14 minutes. That's a long run up to tell you that he was bad. And he had a little flash earlier in the year, but what didn't get there. Toronto, Kelly Olenek. Josh, what do we do with Kelly Olenek? You ride him maybe to a championship? 21, 9, and 5, three steals, a block, two triples, 35 minutes. Quickly, 31, 7, and 13, and 36 minutes. Rowan Barrett, 22, 8, and 7, and 36 minutes. And Gaz Trent, 20, and 7, five assists, three steals in 35 minutes. You might say, what is going on? Why are the Raptors playing all the starters such gigantic minutes against a team like Washington? Why are they doing that? Well, it's against Washington to us for a start. But also, Toronto is sort of relatively locked in here. They're two games ahead of Memphis, two games behind Portland. They're sort of locked in here. So maybe they just keep rolling these guys out with these minutes. So if quickly, Olenek, Barrett, Trent are available, you go and grab them. Bruce Brown, under 20 minutes, nine points. I'd be okay jacking him off. Sorry, Jack. Well, I uh, pushed the button a little bit earlier. That's what she said. And O'Shea Abaji continues to suck. He had nine points in 28 minutes. But unfortunately, unfortunately, Grady Groin suffered a dick contusion. He had to leave the game with uh, 13 points in 24 minutes with three threes on 56% shooting. I don't know what you do with Dick. Well, I, I do know what you do with Dick. I don't know what you do with this player um, who occasionally flashes a little bit, Dick does. Um, with some scoring, with some threes, but it's unreliable. There's like a groinal contusional issue here. Some might say, you know, you get a bruise, which is a contusion, get a little bit of purpling of the skin. 
Some might say there's some uh, purple issues in his groin. That wouldn't be me. Grade A is uh, Jack Offerball. Get that garbage out of here. Yeah, see you later. Um, and then we just got like Jordan Wara out of the rotation, which I honestly didn't think I'd see. I, but I, I don't really understand the plan here. Of like, all right, we've been tanking and playing Malik Williams 35 minutes. Now let's give all of our good players the good minutes and let's put Jordan Wara out of the rotation. Not really sure the plan. Not really sure the point of it. Not really sure the purpose of what they're doing. But they did it. So let's sort of stick with it for now, I guess. Anything can change in this wacky, wacky week. Portland, Boston, cool. Great game. Love it. What an amazing, amazing game. Derek White returned, and Jason Tatum struck down with the injury bug again. He was out while Jalen Brown's wrist healed enough for him to play, and then Sam Hauser was out of the starting lineup. Um, The load-managing legends still get the victory, 124-107 is the final score. Let's talk Portland. Jeremy Grant, yeah, he was unlucky. He was so close to coming back, Jeremy. They just him doubtful because there was a chance he was going to play. In the end, he couldn't quite get over the line. So maybe next one, maybe the next game is where Jeremy Grant returns. Let's be fair. Simons, Grant, Brogdon, Thibel, they are not playing again this season. Um, Shaden Sharp probably isn't either. Delano Banton is and. Oh, man. 37 minutes, 28, 3, and 9. Big usage. This is one of the, again, biggest indicators of this shit does not matter because there is no system in the world where this team goes, all right, boys, we're sorted. Delano Banton's taken 20 a night, 20 shots every night, and then we're going to build around that. I just This is not happening. So these are great numbers, and he's putting up numbers for a team that it just doesn't matter in. Like 30 usage for Delano Banton, it's garbage. The Snowman had 22 and 14 with two steals and a block DeAndre Ayton. He's been really good down the stretch. While Scoot shot horribly, 23%, he did hit all six of his free throws. He had 15 points, eight assists, and two steals. And he's playing better. I won't say he's playing well, but he's playing better, and that's good. Jabari Walker is going to have a lot of efficiency issues. 31% shooting is horrific, but the man brings down rebounds. 14 and 18 here, and he is fine to roster. While Chris Murray had 10 and 7, yuck. Ran Rupert had 9-3-2, and two. also yuck. They're starting, they're getting minutes, but I don't think we really care. Speaking of not caring, that's the Celtics' attitude to the rest of this regular season. So not only did they sit Jason Tatum in this one, but they just sat guys in game. Pozingas played 27, Brown under 30, Horford 21, Drew Holiday 21, Derek White 31. And so Peyton Pritchard played 26 minutes. He had 20 and 3 with 8 assists. Sam Hauser played 27 minutes. He had 10, 2, and 3. And I don't know. Who's going to sit the next one? I'd say Tatum returns. I'd say White's safe, but Brown might sit. Porzingis might sit. Horford might sit. This is going to be the case for this team all through. I could not tell you who is going to be out, but I don't think there'll be a single game here that the Celtics go with all of their starters playing regular starter minutes down the stretch. I just don't know who's going to be in or out on each particular game. The guys we look at are Pritchard. The guys we look at at Hauser. And then an occasional crack at Tillman or a crack at Luke Cornett or something along those lines. That's about... Yeah, as far as we go, I think. On to the next one. The New York Knickerbockers up against the Glen Rivers Masterstrokes, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Knicks. or not the Knicks. Actually, it was the Bucks who had a change in lineup because Giannis returned. And that meant that Jay Crowder moved back to the bench. It also meant that, yet again, the Bucks lose. What? Now, I know Doc Rivers is a terrible coach. Adrian Griffin was a really bad coach. But you couldn't have picked a worse option, a worse option, I don't think, to replace him than, than Glenn. Like, what, what is this boy doing? The Bucks have now <laughs> lost four consecutive games and have lost six out of their last seven, including games against Washington, Memphis, and Toronto. They have four games left against Boston, Orlando, the Thunder, and the Magic again. Could they? Could Milwaukee just close out the year uh, with eight consecutive losses? It's not outrageous what is going on with this team. The Knicks, 122. The Bucks 109. With Josh Hart back playing 37 minutes after he was ejected last game, he had 7, 9, and 9 on 22%. Obviously horrific shooting, but that's what he does. This means that Juice McBride went back to a bench roll and Juice McBride gets jacked. Get that garbage out of here! He had 8 points with 3 steals. It also means that Precious Achua is basically out of the rotation. 5 minutes for him because Tom Thibodeau has come to the realization that Precious is not good. Get that garbage out of here! 5 scoreless minutes for the big sneeze. Ananobi played just a casual 38 minutes in his second game back in a game they won by 13 points. 
He had four points only, but he had four steals and two blocks on 20% shooting. Well, the big ragu played 37 minutes, DiVincenzo. 26, 4, and 3, 8 triples, and Brunson had 43, 6, and 8 in 39 minutes in a game that they won by 13 points. What else do we have? Oh, Hartenstein, 18 and 10. He's really good. Mitchell Robinson, 19 minutes, 1 and 6. He's not that good, but he did have three blocks. But I wouldn't be looking at him as a 12-team league option. And then Boyan Bogdanovic had 15 in 17 minutes, and Alec Burks was out of the rotation. I would think that, yeah, Precious is in real strife of losing that five-minute role that he had there anyway. When you look at the Bucks, right, Lillard was pretty good. 23, 4, and 6 with two blocks. 36% shooting is rough. We know this. Giannis had 28, 15, and 8 with two blocks. Great. Bob Portis played 29 minutes. They went bigger in this one a lot. He had 24 and 5 with four threes because Chris Middleton had to leave the game early due to mouth trauma. He lost a tooth. He had five points in 13 minutes, and it continues to be an absolute disaster of a season for Middleton, who, when he plays 30 minutes, has been great. It's just been injury after injury. I don't think he's going to cost him any time, but it's obviously frustrating. And the guy that's losing out immensely here is Leaky Beasley. 23 minutes, nine points, three threes. But what we know is going to happen. In one of these remaining four games, or two of them, Beasley will play 33 minutes, have 25 points, have seven threes in two straight games. He is one of the ultimate hot and cold players. But when he's cold, look, what are we doing? You've got to get rid of him. Lopez had 13 and five in 29 minutes, three blocks. Much better game from him as well. And then we got 31 useless Pat Connaughton minutes because um, uh, Middleton went off and didn't return. We got more Connaughton, and he is just a almost completely irrelevant fantasy player. That will bring us on to the next game, which was a double overtime banger between the Philadelphia 76ers and the San Antonio Spurs. A couple of lineup changes here. Joel Embiid was out, so Paul Reed started. We're back to that. And then... Keldon Johnson, the horse, returned, and Sandro Mamakalishvili went back to the bench. So Keldon went into the starting lineup where he hasn't been basically all season. We also had Cameron Payne starting in place of Kyle Lowry, who was resting in the Sixers, shenaniganized us again because they announced that Buddy Heald was in the starting lineup. And what that meant was, with no Tobias Harris, well, well Nick Batum's not going to play. That's been their pattern the whole way through. They don't officially rule him out. They keep him active because they want him available in late-game situations to throw lob passes. But then... About three minutes before the game um, started, they said, no, 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 actually, Batum's starting, um, and Heald's coming off the bench, and it's business as usual, so Batum played in a back-to-back. So let's start with Batum, who played 46 minutes in a back-to-back after we expected he wouldn't play a single second. It was a double overtime game, but what is happening? Nine points, three threes, three steals. Tyrese Maxey played 54 minutes. Shout out to the self-branded hat legend, Nick Nurse. 52, 5, and 7 with two steals for Maxi, who took 41 shots. DeJounte Murray's even going, bro. No, he actually is not, because DeJounte took 44, didn't he? Um, and then we had the mayor himself, Ricky Council, playing 22 minutes, 11 points with four steals. Obviously, there's no Embiid, no Harris, no Lowry, still no Melton, which I don't, I don't know if he's alive or not. He's probably chilling with Mark Williams. So I'm not going to read into that from Council, but what I also will look at is that Reed played 31 minutes, the big foul, Paul Reed. Bubba played 15 off the bench, and Paul Reed had 11, 10, and 5, and triple 1, and he's actually been, like, really good the last week. Just frustrating the inconsistency. Ubre 48 minutes, 26, 8, and 5, with two steals on 55%. Huge performances again here from Ubre. He has been ridiculously good over this stretch of time. While Buddy Heald has been, what do you reckon the opposite of ridiculously good is? Dreadful. Get that garbage out of here. Budrick had 10 points in 20 minutes with three assists, and... To play 20 minutes in a double overtime game when there's Embiid, Harris, Lowry, Melton out, yeah, you're bad. For the Spurs, Weminyama, 43 minutes, 33, 18 and 6, 5, 3, 7 blocks, 55% from the field. I know the turnover wanks will want to hear that he had nine of them. Oh, what a terrible game for Victor Weminyama, nine turnovers. Um, yep, so there you go. I mentioned that one. Um, while the original bubbles, Julian Champagne played 40 minutes. He had 17, 8 and 3, 3 threes and 2 steals and... I know Keldon Johnson moved back in the starting lineup. There is no way he is playing again this season. He had to leave this game early. He was screaming in pain with this re-aggravation of his foot. He's done. There's a week left. He is not playing. I'm very confident in saying this. I'm not 100% because I can't be because we see weird stuff all the time. But Johnson is done. You can drop your horse out of your lineups. I think you. Oh, he's not good enough anyway, but I think you'd be okay with doing that. We also got a million minutes from Trey Jones. 49 of them, in fact. It's not quite a million, but I'm just rounding. 17, 8, and 9 with two steals for Jonesy, while Malaka Branham played 44 minutes. The Malaka had 22 points with five threes, but this is what he is. He's a points guy. He scores. There's not a lot else there, but people are going to have to get a lot of minutes here. 
Like Mama Kulishvili played 24 off the bench. He had six and seven. He shot bad. Bad. That, what is that English? He shot poorly. Mamu probably starts next game with Kelden out. And then maybe we look at him. Devontae Graham played 35 minutes. What are we doing? 28, 27% shooting stinks. Nine points stinks. But 35 minutes is unignorable. Now, it doesn't mean we have to add him, but we have to go, oh, could I try Devontae on one of these days maybe? I wouldn't be super rushing into it. And then we only got 15 uh, Zach Collins minutes in this one. I think we'll get a little bit more crossover in other games. They basically didn't cross over all, especially because I just don't think that Kelden Johnson uh, is going to be available and ready to go. The next one was the Sacramento Kings absolutely throttling the Brooklyn Nets, 107-77. 29 minutes for Trey Lyles, 14 and 10 with two blocks and two threes. He's been pretty good in most games since he returned from the knee thing. He's a little bit of a stream guy, though, because what they're doing, though, is they're watching Harrison Barnes and going, oh, absolutely not. What are we doing here? And I'm sorry, Barnesy, but I'm not sure how often we're going to talk about you anymore. Only two players in this game for the Kings were negative. One of them was Barnes, a minus 15, and the other one was Keon Ellis, who had six points in 19 minutes. Barnes, two, and then zeros everywhere. Ellis, six, two, and one. You can jack Keon Ellis. Like, this level of inconsistency, do it. Like, move on. Who cares? Get rid of him. Keegan Murray, inefficient. But the four blocks is great. 19, 6, and 4 is strong, while Fox had 25 and 3 and bad percentages. And Sabonis had 18, 20, and 9 with one steal and two blocks. Sabonis is one of those guys that's very polarizing to me. There was a discussion I was having with someone the other day, and they were talking about, man, yeah, he loves Sabonis. He goes, I think he might actually just be a top five player. I go, what? do you mean fantasy? He's like, nah, nah real life. I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, he's not that. I don't think under anyone's definition, but some people think that, and people will be. Like, there'll be people who'll see Demontis Sabonis in certain mock drafts for fantasy next year, go in the first round, they'll go, what are you doing? And there'll be others that see Sabonis sitting at 25 or whatever, or 20, and go, this is way too low. He's a very divisive sort of a guy. He's just in a lot of different aspects. With Alice struggling, we got 28 Davion Mitchell minutes, and we also got Colby Jones uncorked. Mitchell had 12 points, but Jones had 7, 4, and 4, 3 steals and 2 blocks. That's a Nick Batum line. I'm not saying we add Colby Jones. If you're in a 30-teamer, if you're in a 20-teamer, anyone who's getting 23 minutes with the ability to get defensive stats like Colby did here, you've got to at least pay attention. I'm not saying that he's a huge must-add guy, but that is uh, somewhat interesting that he's playing ahead of Duarte more than Alice in this game, at least, more than Harrison Barnes. For the Nets, no Cam Johnson sat both games of the back-to-back. Mm, no Dorian Finney-Smith, no Dennis Smith, and also no Nick Claxton. That meant that Noah Clowney started. 35 minutes for Clowney. He had seven points only with 10 rebounds. Now, he'd been playing well. This is obviously not his best game, but it also meant that we got to see a little bit more Dayron Sharp. I won't say that he played well. He had four and four, but we'll see what happens with Claxton. I've been talking about this for a little bit that I think that you might get Claxton missing some games, and we got it here, but I just don't know how long that lasts. Well, Cam Thomas had 21 and four, and he was good. Just a pity no one else was. We also got back to big minutes from Trendon Watford. 16 and seven with two threes. Now, I've been burnt on this. I'm not sure I want to trust it, but if all these guys remain out, Claxton, Johnson, Finney-Smith, then I guess you can look at Watford. Dennis Schroeder was disgusting. Like four points, 8%, 8. Single digit, 8. He had seven rebounds and six assists. I think he's just actively a bad player. And I, if they go into the season thinking that he's their starting point guard, God help them. They will be in real strife. But uh, Jalen Wilson also started in this one. He had 11 and 6. And we see the, the Miles Bridges fake games played streak is going to continue here. He only played 24 minutes. He had eight points. He's absolutely horrendous. Bust of a season continues again. He will finish the year with a higher rank than Jordan Poole. But will he be a bigger bust than Poole considering the failure in the fantasy playoffs and that he was drafted a round or two ahead? I think yes. But maybe I'm saying yes because I was actually big on Poole and low on Bridges. So I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, but he stinks. I don't know what's happening there, but he stinks. And I think it's pretty clear at this point that uh, Mikael Bridges is just not checked in at all. But he'll get his 82 game, so that's all that matters, yeah? That's important. Let's do the next one. We're talking um, the Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors. Steph rested in this one, so they started Chris Paul. And we also had Brandon Pajemski move back into the lineup and replace Moses Moody, who was starting. Still no Andrew Wiggins, but we did get the return of the bucket. John Kaminga and foreseeable future legend Steve Kerr actually did. Keep Kaminga on the bench in this one and, and keep Trace Jackson Davis and Draymond Green together. The Warriors, they were up huge in this one. In the end, they don't 
get a comfortable victory. 118-110 is the final score uh, overall, but there was a little bit of garbage time in this. It wasn't They weren't massively threatened, but the margin was much bigger earlier on. What do we do with John Jujang? <laughs> the big fella had 27 points in 33 minutes. He hit seven triples. He can shoot sometimes, but sometimes he's just pure garbage. I'd at least have to throw the name in there and go, oh, maybe, maybe we stream in if we're desperate for threes, but I'm not going to be super interested in it. Back-to-back 30 minutes from Darius Baisley. The New Balance intern scored only six points, but he did have two blocks. But if they're going to give him those minutes, then at least he's got to be marginally interested because he played more once again than Omer Yurtseven. He played more than Taylor Hendricks, who had 10 points with three threes and a block. So maybe Yurtseven isn't the option, even if Kessler is out. I'm not sure it's Baisley, but there you go. Only 27 minutes for Sensible. He had nine points. Sexton played 27 minutes. He had 15, 2, and 7. I worry that a fake injury is going to crop up there. While Keontae George had one of his better games, 34 minutes, 25, 2, and 1 on 50% shooting. But this team is just, they're messy. And nothing that they're doing now actually means anything, I don't think, moving forward into the future. But it's going to be, it's two games in a row where they've just, they're limited some of their starters, even though they're the second string guys. And they're bringing guys like Jujang and Potter and bloody... Um, yeah, Kyra Lewis for 16 minutes because Chris Dunn was ruled out of this game. Like, it's just nonsense, really. For Golden State, Kaminga had 21 and 10 off the bench. Clay had 32, 5 and 4 with six dribbles and no Steph. Chris Paul was great, 12, 1 and 9, four steals, but he's probably not rosterable when Steph plays. Jackson Davis, very good again, 16 and 7 with four blocks. Pajemski, 16, 7 and, 7 and 6, great in 31 minutes. But if Wiggins and Curry are there, like, he's not going to do this. So we just can't rush to go and add Paul or add Pajemski or anything like that. Moses Moody had eight points in 26 minutes, but overall, like this is a, a nothing game. Draymond Green did leave this game um, with a back issue. I'm pretty sure he would have been able to come back in. He sat on the bench for most of the end of the, the fourth quarter, but never entered the game. He had three points in 21 minutes, but again, they didn't need him out there. The Jazz crept back in, but it didn't really get close enough to... um. You have to pull the emergency string and get Draymond back out there. But a weird game, not really sure the takeaway is good from John Jujang, but like I don't really see that as something I'm going to be like hanging my hat on and getting excited about from a uh, fantasy point of view. So on to the final game of the day, the Wolves and the Lakers. There was a change here because LeBron ended up being sick, so he did not play Spencer Dinwiddie moved into the starting lineup for the Lakers. We always thought there was a chance that LeBron was going to sit maybe two games this week. In the end, he only sat the one, but you know, we sort of did see that coming. The Wolves get the victory in the end. 127-117 is your final score. Um, yeah, like we'll talk, let's talk Wolves first because they won. Good victory for them. Just getting stuff done. And a lot of it was because the big fella Nas Reed went off. 31 and 11 with six triples, two steals, and a block, 75% shooting. This is a huge run from here from Reed. Um, elite stuff. We know he's had some struggles at times in that backup role, but as soon as they've started him over Kyle Anderson, we're getting a lot. Now, Anderson played only 18 minutes. He delivered three steals and a block, but 18 minutes is not enough for Anderson to be an absolute blanket must roster. Gobert had 18 and 16. Goose had 26-1-7, and seven, really good game from Redwoods. And it was a really strong game from Nikhil Alexander-Walker, 15-2-4, but took only nine shots, and that's really hard to get too excited about. And you'll be shocked to know that Jaden McDaniels didn't do anything. 11-3-2, no, we actually had a triple zero. No threes, no steals, and no blocks. And we do not roster him in 12-team leagues. Get that garbage out of here! For the Lakers, Anthony Davis played 12 minutes all the first quarter and then didn't return. Issue with his eye. The expectation is he does return for the next game. He had four points. But what that meant was he's got 33 minutes of Jackson Hayes, who had 19 and 10, five steals and a block on 89% shooting for a huge, huge game. I talked about this on the Sunday streaming show yesterday. I said, hey, there's a chance that Davis may not play. So let's have a look at what Hayes maybe provides. And this was beyond any expectation I would have. Rui also stepped up 36 minutes without LeBron. He'd been under 30 minutes for three straight games prior to this. He had 30 and six with four threes. And you'll be shocked to know that when Rui has a big game, it doesn't come with assists or defensive stats. It comes on high field goals, and that's what he did at 65%. Dinwiddie was also good. 36 minutes, 18, 5, and 7, and I haven't said that very many times, and I don't think I'll say it again, so I'm not running to add to him. While Russell had 15, 7, and 11, and stinker from Austin Reeves, bad shooting from the field, bad from the line, 14, 3, and 2 overall. Torian Prince had 6 points, and yeah, I don't really even know why I mentioned it. He's pretty irrelevant. We're going to do lines of the night. 
Let's do the lines of the night. The monstrous line of the night. I don't... Well, actually, maybe you do have some um, queries about who it is, but you won't once I hit this one as well because he's also the young gun of the night. It is, of course, the big fella in San Antonio, Victor Webinyama, who had 33 points. He had 18 rebounds. He had six assists. He had seven blocks. He continues to be insane. Your waiver wire line of the night. We're using the advanced roster percentage metric over at Basketball Monster rather than the Yahoo number at the moment. So if I was using the Yahoo number, it would have been Trey Mann. Instead, it is his former teammate, Aaron Wigo Wiggins, who had 26 points, five assists, and six steals. But if Jalen Williams and Shea Gildas Alexander return, well, we're just not going to care about Aaron Wiggins for fantasy. The dud of the night, this one again, there's quite a few options. Like Harrison Barnes didn't quite fit the um, roster percentage number, but this bloke did. Jonas Valanciunas played four minutes. He had two points. He had two rebounds. You jack him off without too much hesitation. I wouldn't have thought top six players to get us through to the end of today's show. A lot of big, big lines in this one. And number one was Wimbanyama. It was closely followed by Luka Doncic, then Emmanuel quickly, Paul George, Trey Mann, and Bradley Beal. Your top six players rostered under 50% of leagues. It was Wiggins at number one, followed by Dylan Brooks, Jackson Hayes. Keep an eye on Hayes just in case Davis is out. Um, Brooks is always touch and go. Trey Lyles, a little bit interested there. He's number four on this list. Johnny Jujang went off for Utah, but I don't really feel good about trusting any of that. And then lastly was Spencer Dinwiddie, who obviously took advantage of the fact that LeBron was out. And lastly, your top six players for Yahoo Points Leagues. Wembenyama, Maxi, Zion, Doncic, Paul George, and Yanni Antetokounmpo. And that brings us to the end. Did you win a fantasy championship today? Were you in a Yahoo default league? Were you in a Yahoo cash league that ended today? And if you were, did you win? Hopefully, drop that down in the chat or drop it down in the comments below. And while you're down there, why don't you just hit the thumb on the old YouTube uh, like? Why don't you hit the subscribe as well? And on the audio side, you double bang, you come across to both of them. And you leave that five-star review on audio. Guys, we are done. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.